Do you want to get a streaming receiver and not sure which one? How would you like to try turning your Raspberry Pi into one? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this and make it a streaming receiver that is not going to be shabby. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to make your Raspberry Pi a streaming receiver. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now here's what we're gonna be covering in this video about how to make your Raspberry Pi streaming receiver. First, the required items. And other than your Raspberry Pi, there's only a couple of things you're gonna to have to start out with. We're talking about installing Android TV, adding what was gonna get you into the Google Apps Play Store, and then we'll talk about adding a wireless keyboard. Well, it seems like you can hardly throw a stone anywhere and not hit at least one streaming media receiver. There's Roku, there's Apple TV, there's Amazon Fire, but sometimes you, you kinda wanna see about setting one up on your own, or if you've got a, a young one in the house that wants to have their own, but you really wanna go fork over the money it's gonna take to do it, this is a way where you can learn how to do it, and if they're old enough, you know they can even kinda help you do some of it too, so they've got some ownership in the situation. So what we're gonna be doing is covering the something called Constacang, and it was sort of from the focus Constacang, and it's uh, their version of Android TV uh, based on Android 11. So there's two pieces of software you're going to have to get out of the box. You're going to have to get this and burn a image. Then you will get something called OpenG Apps, and that will get you into the Google Play Store to where you can add other channels. And then when we get towards the end, you'll see about adding a wireless keyboard, which is, trust me, that's one feature that a lot of the streaming receivers that I've dealt with could really use because after you do the up, down, left, right, trying to type in your username or password or doing some searching for something, you like having a regular keyboard there. So let's go ahead and get this journey started. Just like you're used to, we're gonna get the process started with Blaina Etcher. You can use pretty much any tool you're used to. If you're not familiar with Blaine Etcher, it's a good one to work with, and there are other ones out there. So we'll select Flash from File, and then we will select the Lineage Costa Kang RPi4. Now this is an unsupported release, so if you run into problems, you'll have to go into some forums or figure it out for yourself. So this is not something you can just call up a number or send an email to. Now we've already picked up the image, and of course it doesn't have anything to install onto because I didn't put in the USB drive. So we should have that. Okay, it sees that. When you will, this is something else we'll have to deal with. And that's going to be enlarging the partition because this is a seven gig image. So there's gonna be a lot of space left unused. We wanna fix that, but let's get things up and running first. So we'll go ahead and click on the creation process and we'll let it run its path. We've got the first file onto the micro SD card. So I'm gonna go, I've already got it plugged into the Raspberry Pi and we will get the power applied and we should start seeing some boot up graphics here in just a second. It's already completed the self test. So we should start seeing something going on. It's, it acts like it's reading the micro SD. There we go. Kind of wanted something to, to show that things were working. So it's, now we've got the infamous progress bar. Not sure how long this is gonna take, but hopefully it won't be too outrageous in terms of time. And I do have it on, there we go. It's amazing when you reassign the keyboard and mouse over. So now let's go ahead and we will get the Google Play Store added. Well, now let's get all this documentation out of the way and we will go into downloads and then we want that one because we've already gotten the unofficial one I mean, we've got the the lineage uh constacang one so now we'll go down here and drop this get that copied over so to get to developer options we go setting device preferences about okay so setting device preferences about 
then we click on build number several times. And it, it's been a while since I've done this. Two, three. Okay, now we've enabled the development option. Setting, device preferences, developer options, advanced reboot is go down to device preferences. Now if we go down to reboot, now we have recovery option. Should It's rebooting right now, so we should be up at the recovery option here very shortly. Okay, so okay, now we're into the recovery, and it took me a while to figure out how to do the swiping, and the mouse initially wasn't showing up, so I had to switch back and forth a few times, and then it finally managed to catch it. So what we're going to do is we'll click on install, and we will select storage, and we've got the USB. We could have put this on the on the micro SD card, but I didn't want to flirt with danger. But we will let it run its installation process here. Now, what I needed to figure out how to do is it said to do a wipe. We'll go back to our directions here. Wipe factory reset. So I had to go back to this menu. So basically, I had to go click down here until I got back to the main menu. So we will do wipe and swipe to factory reset. We'll just go reboot system. Keeping fingers crossed here. Now we should start seeing something a little more normal. Okay, now it's looking for the remote. Okay, it wants to pair. I don't have that kind of remote, so. Oh, okay, just hit F4 to, to go on. So we will click on English, all right. You're connected using the internet, fine. We'll stay on that for right now. Sign in, okay. Sign in using my phone. So I will go over here to my Android phone and then we will type androidtv.com forward slash setup. And then we will enter in 655451. Okay, let's see if it's happy. Okay, so it wants, so we're, we're gonna try the old fashioned route. Oh, no, that one's not going to work. Okay, it's good to know that there are options available. And we'll click Next. And we'll enter the password. After I click in the field, otherwise it won't know that what we're trying to do. And then Next. Next. Okay, two-step verification. All right, we will tell it to send me a code. We'll click on Next. Okay, we will accept terms of service. Oh, we'll say yes for now, help improve Android, yes. We are not going to worry about voice setup. I'll say no thanks. Okay, Raspberry Pi 4 is powered by Android TV, good. Good, ha ha ha. Now that looks better, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and go into YouTube. So this is functional at this point. We're into YouTube F1. There we go. F1 takes you all the way out. So this is going to be a little bit of experimentation, but at least that's doable at this point. But we got one last step to make sure this is going to be functional for you. I don't know about you, but when I've dealt with various streaming receivers, I hate using the remote control wheel to fly around and get the stuff entered, whether it's a passphrase for wireless, whether it's logging information to one of the streaming services. Got something you want to see here. This is the K400 Plus Logitech wireless keyboard. Now, they're not sponsoring this, but hey, Logitech would be willing to work with you. This is a handy little wireless keyboard and it just worked. Now there's a little yellow tab that you will pull out of here and they already send it with batteries, send you with a couple outlines so that will get you started. And this little reservoir right over here is where you can put the little USB nid that it has to have to talk to the Raspberry Pi. And when I didn't see it in there, I thought, great, I got the one in a hundred that it got missed at the factory. Now look in the box, it will be there. So it looks like this little gem right here got it, well, got the wrong gem. I got too many nids over here. So this is what it looks like. So you might want to see about labeling on one because it doesn't really, doesn't have a good indication that it's Logitech. So if you get several of these around, want to make sure you got it. So to use this, it's simply plug it into the Raspberry Pi and mine was already up when 
I did this. Yours may come turned on, mine did. So I'll just turn it to on. And by the time we switch over to, okay, there we go, I had the wrong input. By the time we switch over to this, and my finger's on the trackpad, and it's so really no muss, no fuss. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're gonna see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.